I have 28 free seconds to explain something I mentioned before, that not only magnetic but electric and gravitational, indeed strong and weak forces, have energy to them. If this weren't true, then Newton's theory of gravity would be the correct one, because this is responsible for the deviations in the inverse square law. Gravity has energy, therefore mass, therefore its own gravitational field, and this is what, what describes a black hole. There's nothing left of it except its gravity. So if gravity didn't contain energy, there would be nothing there. Yeah, look at that. The density of lead, the, the, the magnetic energy is so great that it's uh, thousands or millions of times the density of lead when you divide it by c squared, you know, E equals mc squared, uh, the magnetic field around a uh, magnetar, which is a, a, a newly formed neutron star if, it's been, if it was rotating fast enough when it collapsed. And this is in the Scientific American uh, from February 2003. Uh, so you can you can look it up yourself and read this stuff if you don't trust Wikipedia. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about magnetic fields. So suppose you have a, a current in in a ring, like say a superconductor, and and this is equivalent to a permanent magnet. You could have a, a magnetic ring shape like a, a permanent magnet. I'm going to tell you about how this is actually kind of like a battery. So uh, a, a, as far as electric fields go, it's it's very similar in its field profile, uh, there, there's no magnetic charge circulating around inside a battery, true, but uh, this is a magnetic dipole induced by an electric current. Uh, it, it, the source of, a, a, of a, an electric, the electric field of a battery is, is, of course, different because there are no magnetic monopoles. But suppose you had a magnetic monopole. Uh, these, are, these are magnetic field lines, by the way. So suppose you had a magnetic monopole and you released it. It would go around in a circle like this. It would, it would follow around and around and around inside the hole, shoot around, zip around, because it's forced around these field lines. And uh, what would that do? Well, each time it passes through the center of the torus, it would actually, in a sense, uh, discharge the energy. It would demagnetize. Uh, it, it would induce uh, an opposing uh, current a persistent current in this loop of superconductor, or if it's a permanent magnet, it would actually demagnetize the magnet um, and release the magnetic energy. Uh, it's, it's not so easy to do this because magnetic monopoles, to anyone's knowledge, don't actually exist. So no one has uh, this method of, of utilizing the energy stored in a magnetic field. But there are other ways to do it. You can heat a magnet above its Curie temperature and then it will cease to be a magnetic substance and cease to be uh, comprised of uh, magnetic domains and capable of holding a mag uh, magnetic field. Uh, and therefore, when it demagnetizes, suddenly it will release that energy and it will heat itself further uh, a little bit. Now, of course, the energy stored in most magnetic fields we're used to dealing with is pretty darn small. You can see that just by letting two magnets pull each other together. What is that, you know, one or two joules? Uh, it's, it's not much. It's not much energy release. Whereas in, a, in a, an electrochemical battery, it's it's many many kilojoules, um, if not even now probably not megajoules. Um, so you know, if you released a magnetic monopole, it would zip around, and each pass through, it would do a sort of damage to the magnet. Uh, this damage, uh, what I mean is, is, it undoes the energy stored in it. It it it, it takes away from the energy. Uh, and this is very much like an electrochemical uh, battery. Uh, and the magnetic, the, the electric field around such a battery is very similar to this magnetic field profile uh, in that if you were to release an electric charge um, just into the air, it would, it would follow along these, uh, these lines. It, it would be better if you had uh, you know, it embedded in something that conducts electricity a little bit so that the charge can more freely zip around. But each time it, it goes around these loops, it discharges the battery, and it does the same sort of damage to the inside. So the battery is actually very much like the magnet for electric versus magnetic fields.